Yes. One season. Hello. The... I heard that hey everyone, thanks again for joining us again this evening. Uh, I don't know how many of you were in court with us today, but for those who weren't, and for those who are uh, tuning in this evening on the live stream, David and Ajna are going to give us a debriefing on the day and how the court proceedings went and share with us relevant details. And then we're going to have a panel discussion. David's going to moderate. And we're going to hear from some of the, the uh, farmers on the front lines. And Ajna and I are going to participate. We're going to talk about successes and challenges in the food freedom movement. So thanks again for joining us. And if you're watching on live stream, please stay tuned in for a little while. And uh, you can uh, type us questions as we go. Thanks so much. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, um, Liz. I'm, what Ashna and I thought we would do tonight, we'll, we'll, we'll give an update, but I think, think we'll maybe do a little teeny bit different format. Um, since Ajna is really the legal expert, and she's up there with the defense team, uh, she, she uh, I, I think, can really give us some great insights. And I'm more the commentator and observer. Uh, so what I thought we would do is maybe I would uh, pose a few questions to Ajna and ask her to um, to give us some insights kind of based on some some things I, I noticed and I, I just I thought the three highlights today uh, were first of all the afternoon the, the after the deadly afternoon uh, discussion or questioning of the state witnesses and then I thought the other, another highlight was the uh, I would call the decimation of the uh, poor uh, Department of uh, Health uh, uh, Inspector, Mr. Lohr, I think his name. And then there was a, another uh, uh, discussion which Ajna pointed out to me, which I kind of went past me, but I'll ask her to, to explain it as well. Uh, it was the, something about the 50%, 30%, 25% uh, rule. The hiding of evidence from the jury. Okay, the hiding <laughs> of evidence from the jury. So let's start out with the, um, with the, with the afternoon uh, uh, kind of um, the endless afternoon. I mean, it's just, it was, I, I was sitting there thinking, gee, if I was on the jury, I would be, I'd be looking at this. And you, you notice uh, the jurors stopped taking notes uh, the last couple hours. They were furiously taking notes early on, and then they stopped taking notes. And uh, it, 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 I, if I were a juror, I would have been sitting there wondering, um, why are they doing this to me? And I, I think I would have been getting a little angry. But another, uh, someone else I, I, I spoke with who knows a little bit about law said, well, when the de defense, excuse me, when the prosecution doesn't have a great case, or when they don't have a real lot, they try to stretch it out. And I don't know if that maybe was what we're seeing today. But anyway, Ajna, maybe fill us in. What was going on there? Why, why, was, that, why was that dragging on? And why, why were they uh, doing it so slowly and having, um, and repeating the questions and uh, well, you know, I, reading from the document. I do think that the state is scrambling. I know that some of what we saw today, especially with two of the witnesses in the afternoon, a lot of it was redundant and conclusive. A lot of conclusions that could have been drawn just from simple stipulations. Oh, and some of it worked against them as well. They were trying to show that um, some of the documents and applications and tax issues that were sent in weren't done properly or showing discrepancies to infer that Vernon had made a mistake along or, or those the, lines. Whether he was inconsistent or, inconsistent. or, or possibly even dishonest. Right. right, and that to me, I think it also, when uh, Mr. Reynolds Glenn was able to cross-examine those witnesses, it became apparent that even the those witnesses themselves said, well, no, there's really no inconsistency, and we just, this is about a tax issue, we don't even really look at the forms. Right. And it was interesting because one of the points that it did bring out was the Wisconsin policy to encourage farmer entrepreneurship, which I thought was tremendously beneficial for Vernon, and I hope that the jury did pick up on that. And I think that Glenn did a wonderful job of making that point and providing information, which will come out later because this is again the state presenting their case. Right. We, as the defense, we, there has been no opportunity for the defense to put on our case, so <clears throat> or Vernon's case rather. 
And I think that the tactics that go along with that are just as what was said to you, that sometimes when you bore the jury, they stop paying attention or it's showing some sort of disinterest. So I don't think that that's their tactic. I just think that they're scrambling. They start, they start, they start thinking about how weak your case is. <laughs> right, but which is which? We don't know. Right, we, how, we, we don't know. I and, think you know. Yeah. We, we're, and we're, we are, sympathetic we're sympathetic to yeah. Vernon, so we also look at it as very optimistic. Like, well, I hope that the jury is noticing this. But overall, I think that the state witnesses are actually going into our favor. You mentioned Mr. Lohr, which uh, was this. Yeah, let's talk about Mr. Lohr. Yeah, he was one just, of the- Just for, for background, for those of you who may have missed it yeah, this, this morning, the- um, We continued with uh, one of the witnesses from yesterday right. from the sanitation, environmental sanitation type of inspector who came out, who actually was an intern at the time of the inspection. Right, I, I, I so, think, you know, that, 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 that suggested uh, that the state didn't have um, great uh, witnesses. To, to which really, I feel sorry for him because this is, can you imagine that this is your first internship with your job and you go and have this very uh, unique situation as it is. Another point to make with that cross-examination was a lot of, there were a lot of assumptions made in his direct and the state tried to put a lot of conclusions and even legal conclusions into that testimony, <clears throat> which I think that Glenn Reynolds was able to refute quite well. He actually got the witness to say that he had made assumptions and that his assumptions may be flawed. So it was really interesting to watch that witness somewhat unravel. And again, I just, my, part of me feels sorry for him because he's put into a position where he really may not have understood what was going on or even really participated in that in in inspection. Or, or I, I mean, it's really a raid. Or, or, he, or he may not have been well prepped by the prosecution. I think he was very well prepped. Do you? So wouldn't they, wouldn't they when have anticipated saw, any kinds of questions? That when you saw like, his, but when you saw his direct, his answers were scripted. And most most of the time, you're having, and that was even somewhat brought up in court. And the pro, uh, the state got very upset. They, they took it as a personal affront to them to insinuate that his answers were scripted, which, any, I mean, we are sympathetic, so I have to always put myself back there, but it was, you know, as soon as he opened his mouth, it, you can't, you can't say answers like that without, but they were lawyer answers. <laughs> that was not an intern sanitation inspector's answer. That was a scripted legal Legally, in, legally, I, I mean, charged. You know, when he was answering some of the questions, everything was so legally charged. But that being said, today was, I think, a wonderful thing on our side with that specific witness because Glenn was able to really get into the points that mattered, which were assumptions being made on information that he may or may not have have at that time. So the assumptions were brought out. He did assume things. They are opinions. And I think more of that will come out as we have more cross-examination. The witness that's on uh, going to be cross-examined next, I think, is going to also have that same type of reaction. So. Well, yeah, I think that two, two things seem to come out of that. One is he didn't know um, really uh, uh, which, which food or how much food Vernon set aside for personal use and uh, family use, and um, right. uh, well, so that, that yeah, was... the, well, there was assumption of sales, and then some of my notes I can go through them, but um, owner use of product, like you're mentioning, and a very interesting point of having the opportunity to clarify information with Vernon and the people that were present, and the lack of effort to even clarify what he was seeing. So when you when you want when you choose to put your head in the sand, is that is that something that should 
be yeah, but, not brought out. Re related to that, th th there was a suggestion uh, by this witness that he was doing a very routine inspection. And then uh, through the, through the cross-examination, it came out, well, do you, uh, you don't normally have sheriff's deputies, armed sheriff's deputies with you when you do a routine inspection, do you? Or how, how many of those have you done? Well, he, he had actually, never yeah, done any out of the 25 he, or 30 or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, that and, was interesting. And that was, funny. That one, it was interesting, <laughs> but I think it really made an important point to the jury that, uh, that this, because uh, the judge had, has said that uh, the, the, the uh, defense could not talk about the uh, reasons for this raid. So now it's, um, it's clear, he got across the fact that it was an armed raid, uh, that it was very unusual, and um, it's still a mystery as to why it was ordered. But that's, you know, it must have been, that, that leaves the jury to just imagine kind of really well, conspiratorial today, kinds of things. Yeah, and today there were so many things that came out. I mean, they really berated the point of the retail store. But you're, you're seeing, they're calling, you know, the milk, raw milk product, and they're using these uh, hidden names almost to cover up. Yeah, the production the, room. Yeah, well, the production room, that's, you know, that's where you make cheese yeah. and stuff. But um, I, I was thinking when they were showing, like, the bottles, well, what is that? Oh, it's a product. 